What's up karate nerds? Right now I'm on my way to my dojo to teach a seminar for kids in Kubudo. The ancient art of using karate's awesome weapons. And this video is going to be a little bit special because a lot of you have asked me to do a day in the life vlog. But I've done so many of those. So today I'm actually going to be starting a week in the life vlog. That's right. Every day for seven days straight, I'm gonna be filming one thing for you, a week in the life of the Karate Nerd. Enjoy. Can I sit it up? I'm gonna just walk the booty, I'm on my back. I used to love these kinds of exercises when I was a kid and that's why I teach these kinds of things because it wasn't too long ago when I was one of these kids and that's why it always breaks my heart when I hear about karate teachers or experts or world champions that refuse to teach kids as if it's beneath their dignity or whatever but I think kids are the future of karate and I know exactly what it feels like to be one of them that's why I place a lot of emphasis in teaching great kids classes. That was so much fun. Usually when I teach a seminar, like a regular one for grown-ups, I'm actually super tired. But whenever I teach kids, for some reason, I'm super energized. So I'm actually gonna stay behind and do my own training now. But you guys are not gonna see that because I'm only filming one thing each day. So I'll see you tomorrow. Today we have amazing weather. It's like spring is here which means that it's the perfect opportunity to do what we call ice bath, an ancient Swedish Viking tradition. So now I'm on my way to the dojo to pick up my brother Oliver, who's gonna be joining me. <laughs> the coffee and everything. <laughs> Looks refreshing. <laughs> literally ice cold you guys can see the ice right here which means that it's not just about jumping in you gotta prepare and the way you access your deepest part of your brain the central nervous system too is breathing so much stress so what Jess is trying to do just control everything using his breathing because that's the bridge between your autonomous nervous system and the one that you can actually control so you can get your heart rate down you can get your stress levels down just being able to control your own body so it's all through the breathing Now let's do a cut on the bridge. 
How are you feeling Oliver? Energized and refreshed and that's it for today and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> hey guys are you there? I didn't know. Come on in. So today I want to actually show you my new home. In the past couple of months I've been living with my mom because they've been renovating here and oh by the way I actually got a new haircut this morning. How do you guys like it? And I think I got a tan from the ice bath yesterday. All right, so the first room here is the master bedroom. Like they used to say on MTV Cribs back in the days. This is where the magic happens. But as you can see, everything here is pretty uh, basic. It is brand new. I literally screwed in the lights a few days ago. There is nothing on the walls, pretty boring. So if any of you out there know anything about interior design, leave a comment and let me know how to make this room uh, uh, more fun, all right? Let's move on to the bathroom. Here we've got the bathroom. This is the fancy lights. This is the real lights. Here is my Seishingi, of course. You know, it's so white, it thinks it has privileges. It's supposed to go here with the rest of the laundry. Moving on. Now, this is where even more magic happens because as we all know, abs are made in the kitchen. This is why I needed a new kitchen because these damn abs won't show. Cool button here. When you press it, the lights turn on and off. And of course, the most important part of any kitchen is the coffee maker. I might just have had a whole pot in case you can't tell. Always gotta check out the fridge, right? Bam, this is leftovers from yesterday. It doesn't look that yummy, I know. Chocolate, quick tip. This is the best way to store chocolate. Just put it in the fridge. Somehow it tastes 10 times better. Avocados, love that. Kombucha, fermented tea that tastes like vinegar and beer. I don't know why, that's just the way it tastes. Half of a grapefruit or something. Eggs, gotta have the eggs. Organic mushrooms, you know, trying to stay healthy and fit. To the living room. Ta-da! There is nothing in the living room. I'm still waiting for a delivery of a, like a sofa kind of island that's gonna be here in the center. I'm just standing on my handcrafted Persian rug, okay? And then here is my backyard where I'm gonna be busting out katas every morning, at least when the sun is shining. Oh, and just, just ignore that blender I threw there yesterday because I was making a smoothie and that shit started smoking and sparks started flying and I thought it was gonna start burning. So I just ran out here and threw it out and it's been lying there since yesterday just to make sure my new house doesn't burn up. I'm sure most of you are familiar with my very first book that I wrote about a decade ago. Became a number one bestseller on Amazon.com. Thanks to all of you guys who purchased it. And uh, what else? Listen, I don't even have a place to put the freaking vacuum cleaner. That's how new all of this is. So at this point, I just wanted to take a quick second to answer a question that I get all the time, which is how can you make karate or martial arts a profession? How can you make it a career to make money and do what you love for a living? Now, I've never gone to business school. I don't have a degree in economy or finance. I don't know a lot about making money off of martial arts. But what I do know is what I do. And I do what I love. And when you do what you love, you just want to do it all the time, right? Because you're so excited to do it. I, like, I work all the time, but I don't consider it work. I don't have a 9 to 5. I have a 24-7 because I do karate all the time in so many different ways. And when you do something a lot because you love it, you tend to become good at it as a byproduct of just doing it for so long, so much. And that's when you get a disproportionate um, benefit in the marketplace of ideas, you know, supply and demand, right? 
So as a byproduct, you start making money even though you never tried to. So if you ask yourself, how can I make money doing martial arts? I think that's the wrong question to ask yourself because people who have that as a goal usually don't end up reaching that goal. I think you should do something from the heart because you love it, which in turn might end up making you money as a byproduct of doing what you love, okay? It's not about uh, making a living, it's about making a life. And that is the way I approach the martial arts as a career or profession. I write books, I teach seminars, I do videos, I learn, train, compete, I do all of these different things, but it's all based around karate. And that's why I call myself a karate nerd, because that's all I've ever done. I grew up in a dojo. I've never had a real job. I don't know a regular life. This is my profession and my passion since day one. So that's the only advice I can give to you. And if your hobby is karate and you wanna make money or make it a career, I think that's not the right path. Figure out what you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be karate. And then see how you can turn that passion into a profession instead. And that's when I believe you will be successful. And even if you're not successful, at least you will be living the dream. And that's it for today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Now you're gonna see behind the scenes of Karate Nerd Insider. My weekly video instructional subscription service. It's like a secret online membership platform where karate nerds from all over the world get weekly videos and lessons from me. So I'm just gonna get quickly changed and then you, you guys are not gonna see this. I'll be out in one second, okay? So the idea is that I'm gonna ask my brother Oliver to help demonstrate for this week's episode of Karate Nerd Insider. All right. Oh, he's pooping. All right. You ready? Yep. Okay. You're not gonna change? You're gonna use those clothes? Okay. Nice. All right. Let's go downstairs for this one. So I'm going to be taking that because Luis, of course, is filming the episode of Karate Nerd Insider like she always does. So I'm just going to put this in the corner here and you guys can observe what it's like behind the scenes. In today's episode of Karate Nerd Insider, we're going to look at a little bit of stand-up wrestling and grappling. What the Okinawan masters refer to as tegumi. All of these basic biomechanical principles that we always see in kata. And when I do these moves, hey, that looks like shisochin kata, for example. And if we close the hands, hey, that almost looks like a seisan or sanseiru or suparinbe kata. So, yeah, sanchin. Can you see how he squeezes his armpits? keeps his elbows in and tries to maintain this kinesthetic awareness, always sensing what I'm about to do or where I'm about to go. Heading down this. I twist my body and I block your leg. Hey, holy cow. That's the first move of the kata, MP or one shoe. Rotate. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck and have fun. <laughs> All right, that's it. Is this thing still on? Yep, so now you've seen oof, behind the scenes of a 15 minute episode of Karate Nerd Insider, my weekly online secret membership club. What do you guys think? How did today's episode go? Perfect. Perfect, of course. And what does Louise think? <laughs> Nah, okay. <laughs> she likes to film, okay? She's behind the camera. And I know a lot of you people want to see who's behind the camera, so now you got a little glimpse, all right? That's it for now. I'll smell you guys tomorrow. Today I'm filming a little bit later. Time to go for an evening run.
do some uh, plyometric work, some jumps and hops and skips and try to get those fast twitch muscle fibers working. So right now I'm just warming up with some uh, trail running which is really good because it has these different angles of impact on all of your joints. I just realized something funny the last time I was here. Have you thought about that? What we exhale, the plants and trees inhale. And what we inhale, they exhale. Now if that's not reason enough to understand why nature and human has such an essential bond, then I don't know what is. If you want to try one of these exercises for yourself, you can start with this one where you start leaning, you drop until you desperately need to catch yourself with either the right leg or the left leg. And then you go into a sprint, stop, and then you try again. Now, when you lean, you don't want to have a completely straight posture because in karate you never have a leaning posture when you're fighting right you want to remain stable and straight but you want to let your center of gravity drop down okay and your alignment will make you lean forward or drop forward and then you just catch yourself in what looks like a front stance right and usually in karate we have this type of stance which means that you have the same angles in your joints which means that it carries over it's sport specific even though karate is way more than a sport right and then you push you run and you stop catch you tomorrow did you get it awesome <laughs> Good morning karate nerds! Another beautiful day. Just kidding, it's actually snowing today. It's so crazy. One day the sun is shining and now the weather gods decided it's gonna be winter again. Anyway, this uh, morning I'm gonna be practicing my kata because I have an upcoming national championship this weekend. So since I've been filming my own training so much in the past, I thought I would do something different for you guys this morning. So I'm gonna actually be answering a Q&A at the same time as I'm practicing my kata. So I'll be answering one of your questions, doing some moves, and then answering another question and so on, until I've answered a handful of questions. So that you guys can get some uh, nice, fun, practical knowledge instead of just watching me practice because that's getting old, right? Let me start answering some of your most commonly asked questions. In fact, I have hundreds of them that you sent me. And number one, the most popular question is the following. Please talk about grappling in karate. Would love to hear your take on it. Great question. And you don't have to look any further than the Bubishi, the famous book that many of the old masters refer to as the Bible of karate because it's the most valuable historical text that we still have today that proves that there was a connection between the southern province of Fujian in China and Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. So as far as we know, the techniques and training methods presented by this historical document have to have been the closest thing to what karate looked like before the term karate even existed. And when you look at the moves, the techniques in the Bubishi, nine times out of ten they are grappling based so 
If you look at the traditional way karate was practiced, which was for the purpose of self-defense, you quickly find out that it's a lot of grappling, not just punching and kicking. And of course, these techniques are still being practiced and expressed in and presented and preserved in kata. The problem is most of us have no idea how to properly apply these techniques in a self-defense based scenario. We usually apply the moves against punches or kicks starting at a long range. But looking at the reality of self-defense, as a matter of fact, it starts up close when you least expect it. Because if you have the time and ability to see your attacker in, fr in front of you, then you also usually have the time and ability to escape from that situation. And self-defense is what happens when you cannot escape, when you don't have any other choice but to actually defend yourself, hence the term self-defense. And that's usually when you are at grappling range. Okay, moving on. Next question. Hi Sensei Jesse, I am a big fan of you. I love the teaching style of you. Actually, I was wondering that which type of training should we do for karate? Is it weight training, practicing kata, shadow boxing, training with a punching bag, or any other type of training? Blah blah blah. Well, listen, I am a karate nerd, okay? And by the definition of the very term, I want you to incorporate everything that karate consists of because it's such a wide variety of training methods that although there are different ways of training they're all falling under the umbrella of karate in itself i want you to be a generalist not a specialist see there's a reason military generals are called such because it's not about collecting the dots it's about connecting the dots and i know that a lot of people love to specialize in kata or in kumite or in the tradition or in the sport or whatever but for me as a karate nerd and hopefully for you too i think that there is so much to learn when we try to incorporate all the different aspects of karate whether it's self-defense based makiwara kobudo the weapons ground fighting competing sports science whatever anything and everything that can improve your karate uh, on a whole in the macro not just the micro to me is worth exploring because karate should be a lifetime study so never limit your exploration of this beautiful art Okay, next question. Have you ever been in real fight? And did you use karate or just MMA? Also, I don't want to be rude, but a black belt karate man can do nothing in real, real, real fight against stronger opponents like me. What do you think, I'm stupid? Why would I have been in a real fight? I mean, okay, sometimes you can't avoid it, but if you can, never end up in a real fight because you're gonna hurt either yourself or someone else. And why would you want to do that? To me, violence is the silliest thing ever. I don't do martial arts because I want to hurt the opponent in front of me. I do it because I want to defend the people behind me or inside me, okay? As a way of self-mastery and self-development. It's not about fighting, okay? Um, and sh this is why my street fighting record is undefeated because I never allow myself to end up in those types of situations where I might have to fight, okay? So you need to practice situational awareness, what we call zanshin in Japanese. I hope that answers your question. Can a woman start taking martial arts classes over the age of 30? Just looking in becoming stronger mentally and of course, physically nope it's too late it's over you might as well just roll over and die you can never start taking martial arts classes okay i forbid you if you are a single day over 30 it's not for you just joking listen the best time to start martial arts was when you were 12 years old the second best day is right here right now it is never 
too late to practice martial arts. And I feel so bad when I see people blocking their own self-development and success by putting up their own mental roadblocks and finding excuses and ways to try to explain to themselves why they shouldn't or couldn't do something. Because I think this is the reason. Because you want to immediately be good at it. And you, you don't want to adopt the white belt mentality, what we call shoshin in Japanese. And you're maybe afraid of looking silly or feeling like a beginner. But I, I encourage you to think about the importance of humility in learning anything. Because we're all beginners every day of our lives. Every time we do something for the first time, whether it's meeting a person or trying a new type of food or reading a new book, you are a beginner in that moment. So try to embrace this never ending continuum of always being a beginner in life in everything that you do. And when that's the case, starting martial arts isn't really a, a, any different than doing anything else for the first time. And it's never too late unless you're already dead. Next up, what is your approach on karate as modern self-defense? Now, we already established that the original purpose of karate was self-defense. But that was way, way back. So what about modern self-defense? Well, if you look at science, it actually proves that today's modern society is safer than it has ever been before, even though fake news usually makes us think, think differently, okay? But as a matter of fact, you're safer now than people have ever been in history. So what exactly do you need to defend yourself against? Because the likelihood of getting punched or kicked or choked by somebody in the street is slim to none. I believe that what you really need to understand how to defend yourself against is toxic people, food that's bad and makes you obese, uh, a stressful job, these different lifestyle factors that are harming yourself and therefore requires self-defense. Because when it comes to somebody physically attacking you, I suggest you use the most modern way of defending yourself, which is get a gun. Okay, let's wrap this us let's wrap this up with a last and final question from Mark. Hey Jesse, what karate books do you recommend? Well, <clears throat> I should recommend my own books, but I wrote them such a long time ago that I feel that there are other better books that you can get right now, okay? Even though these are also old, they contain timeless information that I believe can help anyone on the journey of karate. And the first one is one that I've already mentioned, the Bubishi. Purely from it, from a historical standpoint, it is so valuable and there is a reason the old masters called it the Bible of Karate. Uh, so, of course, get an English translation and compilation, not the original old school Chinese textbook. The second I recommend is Watashi no Karate Jutsu by Motobu Choki, a notorious karate master slash street fighting thug, depending on who you ask. And his exploration into functional applications of karate's techniques. Now, he was a person who was notorious for using and testing his skills in the red light district known as Tsuji in Okinawa. And he wrote down all of his experiences and observations, kind of like Miyamoto Musashi, the Japanese uh, ronin, uh, a samurai without a lord did. And he's famous for his book of five rings, right? So this is like the Okinawan Musashi and his name was Motobu Choki. So that's the second book I recommend. And last but not least, I would have to say uh, Karate Do, My Way of Life by Funakoshi Gichin, who, funnily enough, was uh, somebody who Motobu Choki, the previously mentioned master, actually hated. He once described Funakoshi as a Sanshin or a Shamisen, the three stringed guitar. Beautiful sound on the outside, but hollow on the inside. Now, whether that is true or not, I will not speak about that, but Funakoshi Gichin, in this third book recommendation, of course, wrote down how he 
popularized and modernized karate. It's like an autobiography as he moved from Okinawa to Japan and made Shotokan, his particular style of karate, uh, one of the biggest in the world. And it's a really fascinating story. So those are the three book recommendations, Bubishi, uh, Motobu Choki's book and Funakoshi Gichin's book. And that's it for today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the last day of this weekly vlog. I know what you're thinking. It's getting pathetic. I am back in the dojo again. But you gotta understand that this is like my second home. I spend more time here than I do at my home. So I thought for this last day in this weekly vlog, I would do something different. So I call up my childhood friend, Steven, to come here and do a best friend challenge with me, where we ask each other questions and try to guess what the answer is so that you guys can get to know to learn me a little bit better and maybe have some fun in the process for this last day of this week in the life vlog. So we're gonna go downstairs, Steven just arrived, and let's see how it goes. I hope you guys enjoy this. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the friendship challenge, which means that Stevenson will get one of these and a pen. I get one of these and a pen. And then we have a bunch of questions in this karate nerd mug. So what happens is I'm gonna pull out a question and then you will write what you think my answer to the question will be. And then I will write the answer, and then we show the camera together. All right? Yeah. By the way, maybe you should give a quick introduction to the karate nerds out there. Just something about yourself. Okay, my name is Steven. Uh, me and Jess have been friends for around 20 years now. So, yeah. So nobody knows me better than you, probably. <laughs> uh, let's do this. I'm gonna start. What is my favorite way to relax? <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. What did you write? Listening to music. Damn! Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> exactly. For those who don't know, of course, you also love listening to music. Of course, yeah. But we listen to different kinds of music. What I love is <laughs> hip hop and rap music and I know at least for as long as I can remember your favorite artist or band was Queen. Yeah, Queen. Okay, yeah. yeah. What else? Daft Punk. Daft Punk. Yeah, and Simon and Garfunkel. So yes, pretty okay. wide yeah. area of music. But pretty different yeah, yeah. compared to what I enjoy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's my middle name? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how to spell this. Are you ready? Yep. What does it say? Nebot Muin yes. and Bjorn. This is your very strange middle name, which is Native American. Native American. Or Native, right? Native Canadian. Which, which type or which tribe? Uh, the Mi'kmaq tribe, that's usually around Nova Scotia, Halifax. In Canada, right? In Canada, yeah. 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 One fun fact about Native Americans is that you have dry earwax. Yeah. I have wet <laughs> earwax. And that's actually a genetic you know, predisposition. That differentiates. Is it though? Yeah. yeah, it is. No, no. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I looked it up. It's genetically determined. Anyway, enough about earwax. <laughs> What's my favorite book? Ready? Yeah. Aragon. <laughs> Aragon? Yeah. I don't even know what Aragon is. Yeah, a book about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, like no, no, no. The correct answer is Musashi. Musashi. You know who Musashi was? Yeah, yeah, the samurai. Yeah, 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 the Japanese. So there is a book by Eiji Yoshikawa, who was a Japanese writer, and he wrote out the story of Musashi. It's like this thick. What is my dream job? Yep. Personal trainer. Damn! Living my dream. I wrote yeah. movie, movie critic. critic. Yeah, I like movie. Yeah, well. Because you, <laughs> you are a pretty good movie critic. And you watch a lot of I movies. I watch a lot of movies, but yeah. I wouldn't like to work with it. No? no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I became president, what do you think I would do first? Okay. Yep. Make karate a mandatory school subject. Dude! That's exactly <laughs> what I wrote! <laughs> Boom! That's what 
best friends do. <laughs> Martial arts or karate, karate specifically needs to be a mandatory school subject. I agree. Well, yeah, yeah. It w the world would be a better place. Yeah. And that's what Itosu Anko did back in the days in Okinawa, which was how karate was popularized and later spread to Japan. And that's the reason why we even started practicing. If it hadn't been for the fact that karate was in the school system, it wouldn't, probably wouldn't exist today. What drives me crazy? Okay. Yeah, yeah. People that walk slow in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me crazy. Okay, I wrote bullies. Yeah, also, but people that walk in front of me slowly, even worse. Just walk past them. <laughs> But they always like <laughs> turn exactly. in front of me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Last question. Yeah. What's my best talent? Okay. Okay. Yeah. What did you write? Humble. Humble. Very, very humble. Wow. I wrote learning. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't be humble if you wrote humble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it! <laughs> exactly right! But what I was thinking is, as you uh, presented humble, without humility there can be no learning. Exactly. Because to learn something new means that you have to admit to yourself that you didn't know something before. And that requires humility. But of course, it's a, if I wrote it, it wouldn't be true. No, yeah. Alright, that finishes this best friend challenge. And that's it. This week in the life video is officially over and I hope you enjoy this new concept of filming one thing each day for seven days straight. If you have any questions about what you've seen or what I've said or done, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I always read your feedback and I love giving you answers. Until the next video, train hard, good luck and have fun. Peace out.